Are you winning the war against the enemy? Today, I want to talk to you about how to fight back, how to fight the enemy. We're going to be reading through Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. So this is when Jesus was called out by the Holy Spirit to go into the wilderness and he was fasting on his 40-day fast right before he was launched into his ministry. Okay, that's the backdrop. So starting in verse 1, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Then he answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written that he will command his angels concerning you, and their hands will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said again to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil says to him, he t again the devil took him to the mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and he said to him i will give you all of this if you will fall down and worship me then jesus said to him be gone satan for it is written you shall worship the lord your god and him only shall you serve then the devil left him and behold the angels came and were ministering to him so I want you to see all of the things that are going on here. Because whenever we are going through a battle, we can expect the same things that Jesus went through. Okay? So what are the things that the devil used to attack him with? So the first thing was his identity. If you are who you say you are. If you're the son of God. Right? Right? And, and that's happening in our world right now because people don't know who they are. They don't stay in the word of God. They're not close to Jesus. So they don't know who they are. So he's questioning his identity, right? He's also twisting the scripture. Satan will always manipulate the scripture. So in that second portion where he told him that the angels will, you know, the angels will come and and keep you from dashing your foot against a stone. That is another scripture in the Bible. But he see, he's twisting it to say, basically telling him to go and commit suicide. How many people have had suicidal thoughts in our generation, even right now with all the young people, right? And they hear these voices and it's the lie of the devil. It's the voice of the devil because Satan will always tempt you with twisting of the scripture. He will twist twist the scripture to make it seem like it means something else. This is why we have to be so careful. He always brings a counterfeit too. When he took him up the third time at the top of the hill and he said, I'll just give you everything you want. So basically he's, he's telling him that he will give him everything that's, that he sees as far as his eyes can see. And it's everything in this world. I'll give you all the money. I'll give you all the fame. I'll give you all the girls. I'll give you all the fortune. I'll give you all the prestige. I'll give you the greatest job with the corner office and the window view and sky view, whatever it is. He lies to twist everything that God is doing. He always tempts you right before the breakthrough. This was Jesus who was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. The Holy Spirit called him to that because he knew he was about to launch him into his ministry. So Satan will tempt you before you get a breakthrough. Not only that, but he always tempts you to compromise. He was tempting Jesus, telling him to compromise. Why don't you just turn these loaves and these stones into bread if you're the son of God? Because you've been fasting for 40 days and nights. You are starving, bro. He's telling him, why don't you just compromise? That's what he's saying. You know, the compromise might look different for you. It might be like, well, why don't you just sleep with a few girls before you get married? And, you know, then later on you can be 
you know, purified and sanctified and wait for a godly girl. It, it's, it comes in different forms. It, he'll cause you, call you to compromise in every area of your life. And he always continually, continually comes at you. But I want you to see what Jesus did. Jesus knew who he was. He knew his identity. So that's the first thing. We have to know our identity. Number two, we need to stay in the word of God. If you are in the word of God, you will not only know your identity, you will know the devil's identity. When you know your enemy, you know how to fight him. You know his twisted, scheming ways because God told us it, all of it. It's in the Bible. Stay in a close, thirdly, stay in a close relationship with the Father. Jesus knew the Father. He knew what he was called to do. He knew who he was in Christ. And he knew the Word of God because he is the Word of God. <laughs> so we have to follow his example. That is how we will win this battle. Do you see what he kept saying to the devil? It is written. It is written. Remember another verse in the Bible where it says that if we will resist the enemy, he will flee. If we seek God, we resist the enemy, then he will flee. Okay? We're not defeated people. But if you don't know your identity, the devil will come and try to steal everything about you. And if you don't know your identity and you don't know your authority in the Bible that Jesus Christ has given to you, you will be snatched. He will snatch it from you. He'll snatch the word of God from you. He'll snatch your destiny from you. He will snatch and steal everything from your life. This is why we need to stay in close communion, communion with Father God every day in the word of God, in prayer, in worshiping him, in speaking to him. Stay in community with Father God and you will, you will be able to win the battle. If you're up against a battle today, that's my encouragement to you. You are not defeated if you are a child of God. The only defeat that you will have in your life is what you give over to the devil. I'm talking from experience. <laughs> I've had victory and I've had defeat. And along the way, you learn your lesson by standing on the word of God. So if you're up against something today, I want you to take courage today. This is how we fight the devil. We stay in the word of God. We stay in the cleft of the rock, so to speak, in God's close quarters with God. Talk with him, walk with him, pray with him. Pray to him, worship him, praise him. Stay in the word of God and resist the devil and he will flee. He's the one who's defeated and that's why he so comes against you because he knows that if you come to the knowing, knowing of who you are in Jesus Christ, you have the victory, you have the power, you have all authority given to you by Jesus Christ over all the enemy. The Bible says that we've been given authority over the enemy. <laughs> But you won't know it and walk in it if you don't know the word of God and who you are in Jesus. Maybe you don't know Jesus today. It's not too late. Surrender your life to him as the Lord of your life. Just lay it down today. Stop living your life in your own accord. Turn it over to him. He loves you. And he wants to be with you and commune with you. Let me tell you the gospel in a very simple way. You've heard of the Ten Commandments, right? The Ten Commandments, one of the things in there is thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not have any other gods before me, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. All of these Ten Commandments that you know of, if you've broken one in your entire life, and we all have, even the greatest people who seem the sinless, most <laughs> harmless people have all broken one of the Ten Commandments. 
The gospel says this, without the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we have to pay the penalty for our sin. And it's not only death on when we leave this world, but it is eternal separation from God because we can't pay the price. But here's the good news of the gospel is that all of those sins, every sin that we commit from now until the day we die, Jesus' blood, when he died, was buried and rose from the grave three days later, his blood pays the price for your sin. Without it, we can never be in heaven with him. With it, with him, with full surrender to him as Lord over your life, you can spend eternity in heaven with Jesus, with Father God. That means when we die, we don't, we don't go into hell. We go into heaven forever where the Bible says that all the tears are wiped away. All the grief is gone. All of the hurtful and ugly things of this world are gone. And everything is restored to the way that Father God meant it to be all along. That's the gospel. It's beautiful. But if you don't lay down your life today and pick up Jesus' plan and life for you, you'll never taste it. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your life today. Turn to Jesus and give him your heart. He will forgive you of all of your sins. He will purify you and he will cleanse you and change your life. If you made this decision today, please let me know because I want to pray for you. I know as a new believer, you just don't know what to do. You, you, you may say yes to Jesus. You may get baptized. You may start going to church and you just really don't know what to do. And I, I want to pray for you. If that's you today, let me know. And I want to say thank you to everyone who watches these videos week in and week out from all over the globe. Even in the 1040 window, y'all, where the, where the primary viewers are Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu. Share this video. Thank you, thank you for watching this video. Share this video. We need to reach those people. That is the most unreached people population. So share this video and thank you for doing it. It's such an easy thing to just click share. Come follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And I'll see you next time.